The understated approach of 8th grade is both its biggest strength and weakness. It's direct, it's self-contained, and it's full of the awkward anxieties of middle school. Elsie Fisher plays Kayla so true to life. She's so vulnerable, so uncertain, grappling with one of the stickiest age ranges there is. There's no she-turns-conventionally-attractive-and-confident moment at the end, and there on the other side is her dad, trying his best to figure out how to connect with his only daughter at an age where she doesn't even know how exactly she wants to carry herself. He's struggling to do it alone, and there's no way he can put all her teenage worries to rest, but he's there, and he wants to demonstrate how much he cares. The film can feel a little lacking in triumphant broad strokes. It also coincided with what I perceived as a wave of coming-of-age movies about white girls in a brief but still mostly stale break from the endless supply of ones about white boys in the late 2010s. Bo Burnham's fans can feel a little like, um... Losers, in other words. Well, but all the same, when I saw 8th grade, I found it to be a unique and intimate portrait of a young girl, even if it didn't inspire a tremendous emotional response at its climactic moments. And I hold that opinion despite the fact that the film was written and directed by Bo Burnham. A man. There's an understandable skepticism that arises for anybody but a woman behind the camera when the subject is so well of that experience. But is it possible to still do the story justice otherwise? Short answer, yes. There are plenty of good small-scale drama movies with female protagonists written and directed by a man and vice versa. Barry Jenkins did it on If Beale Street Could Talk, Justin Chan on Ms. Purple, Ang Lee directed Three Sisters on Eat, Drink, Man, Woman. Of course, we do overemphasize the significance of the director too much. D directors are the leading role on the direction of a film, and writer-director even more so, but film is a collaborative medium. Nobody can fill every role by themselves. Long answer? Burnham said in an interview with Rotten Tomatoes that he first conceived of the film as a lens through which to convey his concerns about the pervasive presence of the internet in his life. If you've seen his latest special, Inside, you've seen an even more personal expression of this contentious relationship with the internet, perhaps put into a new perspective by the pandemic. The character that came out of that initial musing was somebody who might be most affected by the internet and social pressures that seemed to ride it like a 2000 platformer with floating rails. A teenage girl. I don't know, I wanted to write something about the internet and how I was feeling at the time, which was nervous, and, and, and my nerves felt like they were connected to the internet somehow. And so I sat down to write a bunch of things and stumbled on a voice of this girl and found that I could say everything I wanted through her. I mean, I didn't sit down to write a story about a 13-year-old girl because I wouldn't feel qualified to, but it was just a, a strange thing that when it started to happen, it felt like this feels very personal and right to me, and it feels like the best way to talk about the current moment is through uh, someone that is really feeling the current moment, which is an eighth grader. Societal pressure is most obviously directed at young girls. Media ridicules their behavior and interests, capitalizes on their insecurities to sell material goods, demands they look and act a certain way, sexualizes them while simultaneously demanding a constructed image of purity. And the added presence of social media provides a space to perform and self-compare that follows them everywhere. Burnham has also noted that he has a large amount of teenage girls among his fan base, and this connection to his young female viewers was a starting point to consider who a film about the internet should focus on. In a 2018 interview with IndieWire, he said, I didn't want to make a nostalgic movie. I didn't want to make a movie about my past experience. I wanted to make a movie about what I was currently going through. Being about a girl really isolated me from being nostalgic and projecting my own experience. It was really great to be able to look at something like 8th grade, which is so familiar to all of us, but to be like, I actually know nothing about this, so I have to research and try to experience this for the first time with her. The film is also not that far off from something I imagine Burnham could be familiar with. Kayla's white, she lives in a well-to-do suburban neighborhood, she gets lonely and depressed and even turns to doing some kind of performance on the internet in her free time. Kayla can be seen emulating the style of beauty and fashion YouTubers in her vlogs, obsessing over the difference between hers and the popular girls' social media engagement, even talked down to and put into a traumatic experience by an older boy that she's too afraid to tell anyone about. But I imagine he didn't just lay down a scene of sensitive material and show up to set the next day. Writing and directing a movie doesn't mean you don't get notes, ideas, and input from other people. I think that statement applies to getting a solid, contemporary depiction of the age group as well. I also want to note that this movie doesn't adhere to the weird pattern of male actors writing or directing a coming-of-age movie to have their protagonists engage in concerning activity with an older woman and not adequately frame it as wrong.
Jonah Hill and Shia LaBeouf, you are gross. I also think of Spanish director Pedro Almodovar, who frequently casts women in leading roles to much acclaim by female audiences. And many of his female characters seem to be inspired by his mother and the predominantly female home he grew up in. He also expresses some particular interest in exploring the cultural canon of female protagonists in Spanish cinema. Forging narratives where mothers and women of various walks of life are given complexity where they are traditionally just objects and side characters. Penelope Cruz, who has starred in five of Amotovar's films, said in an interview, He was raised by his mother and her sisters and neighbors, with a lot of women together. It's a little bit of what you see in Volver, and he was always watching and observing. She likened it to her own childhood in her mother's hair salon, observing customers and stylists. It was so inspiring watching them interact, what they were saying, what they were not saying. The fascination with the female universe, he's constantly paying homage to that. Your representation of his mother, I believe, your, your Salvador's mother, was that a big responsibility and a burden to represent? No, it was an honor, actually, because I met her and I like her so much. And she was somebody that was so important for him, the woman that her and the sisters and some of those neighbors, like they shaped his personality. And they are, I feel like, responsible for his love and adoration and respect for women. Obviously, both Amoldovar's female-led films and Eighth Grade are generally well-received. The hyper-focused presentation of Kayla's story is what made me curious enough to write about the film. But it also made a good impression at face value first. Regardless of the researched elements, I think the insane awkwardness and self-consciousness of middle school shown here is something anybody can latch onto. But you don't have to relate to everything in order to like it. That should never be a prerequisite to feel something for a story, or God forbid, a human being. If art feels genuine, focused, and communicates something, then it's grounds for me to be affected by it. Writing outside your comfort zone takes work, research, and revisions. You should expect people to question why you chose to do this or that and be prepared to answer why you felt equipped to handle this story. There's responsibility to how you portray sensitive material. That doesn't mean you can never attempt it. Yeah, uh, thanks for watching this one. Um, check out my links consider subscribing or giving me some kind of engagement so that the algorithm bumps me up. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs>